Hey everyone, welcome to the first episode of my new series on the Zoom Lifetrack L12. I've decided to mix things up with shorter, more focused videos, so over the next six parts, we'll dive into the key features and frequently asked questions for the L12. In this first episode, I'll introduce you to the main functions of this versatile unit, the multi-track recorder, the digital audio interface, and the live mixer PA board. So let's get started. To start, let's look at all the features that are shared by the three main functions. The board has 12 input channels, eight mic and line, and two additional stereo inputs for a total of 12 discrete channels. Phantom powers for all eight mic inputs can be selected four inputs at a time. The first two channels have a high Z button to better record high impedance instruments. The next six inputs have a minus 20 dB pad button to compensate for loud audio sources. All inputs have high quality preamps featuring low noise, low distortion, and up to 60 dB of gain. They offer great clarity and transparency. The first eight channels have a gain knob that comes first in the signal chain with wide range up to 60 dB, perfect for setting the proper gain and getting a clear signal. A one knob compression on the first eight channels is perfect for quick and easy control, letting you dial in more or less compressions with a single twist. The select button lets you choose which channel you are controlling, so you can adjust all of the settings like EQ and effects. 10 faders to control the volume of each channel in your mix. That's most of the shared features, so now let's look at each individual function. All right, let's talk about the standalone multi-track recorder, probably one of my favorite functions of the board. It records to an SD card, which you can have it up to 256 gigabytes. That's a lot of room in there. I use the 128 gigabyte and I have yet to fill it up. If you run out of room, you can easily transfer your files to your computer or to another USB flash drive and then maybe delete the files that you have on the original card. It uses different recording formats. You can record MP3s for each track, or you can record, which is what I recommend, record WAV files, which are more high quality, and you can record either a 16 or 24 bit, and the sample rates can go from 44.1 kilohertz, which is a standard, to 48 and 96 kilohertz, which is a lot more high definition, and they're, they make bigger files if you need to. You can record each track separately, or you can record them all at once, so that you can either layer your recording one by one, record your guitar first, then you add your bass, and you add all the other instruments, vocals, whatever, and you make your, your, your mix. The one frequently asked question about the recorder that I want to clear up from the beginning is that when you record these tracks individually, when you monitor them, you can hear the effects that are built into the board. You can hear the EQ, you can make changes on the EQ, and you can select um, effects, reverbs, halls, that kind of thing, for you to monitor your recordings. But it will not, I underline not, it will not record the effects onto the individual tracks that are being recorded to the SD card. That's not such a bad thing because if you are recording something in this board and then you transfer it to your digital audio workstation on the computer, it's a lot better to add effects, EQ, compression, things like that on your computer rather than on the board. Now, if you're using the board as standalone recording and you wanna make a stereo mix of your recordings, you can do that and then you can use your effects EQ that are built into the board. It will record on the master track, as I was saying before, you've got a stereo master track that you can record your mix. So if you have recorded all your tracks on the board and you are mixing it, uh, either through your headphones or you have your speakers, you're mixing it, you're using EQing each track with the uh, effects or EQs that come with the board, and you're using your effects for the vocals or drums or whatever you can, those will be recorded into your master mix but it will not record individually. As I was mentioning about monitor what you are recording, part of the board and part of the recorder is that you have monitor out, you have five separate monitor out headphone outputs that you can have actually have five separate mixes to the musician. So when you're recording, and you're listening to yourself record, uh, you will hear the effects. 
you will hear the reverb and you can actually cue your mic or, or the sound for the person to feel comfortable while they're recording. Even though you're not recording to the individual track, you are listening to the effects in your headphones and you got five different headphones. You can actually give each musician a different mix as far as volume on those monitor outs so that uh, if the drummer doesn't want to hear his drums because he's sitting on the drums, it's the drums become too loud. You can bring the drums down on his mix and you can maybe raise the, the bass or the guitar up on his headphones. And the other way around, if the guitar player is on the other side of the room and he wants to hear more drums, you can actually give the guitar player a mix with more drums and a little more bass and however you want to do it. You can have five separate mixes to five separate headphone outputs built in with this board. So that's a great thing. And you will monitor the uh, effects and the EQ on the monitor outputs. Your songs will be recorded as projects and the projects can be easily stored, renamed and recalled. You can even have them in separate folders and they contain a lot of information about what you're recording, including some of the fader levels and EQ settings, including effects. So it's very handy and very easy to use. Other features that I like to mention is that you can overdub, meaning that you can record a couple of tracks, then set it to overdub and keep adding tracks until you fill all the open tracks on the board. You can also do punch in and out. And for that, I recommend that you purchase the uh, foot pedal that uh, you can buy and add to the board. And with the foot pedal, you can uh, hit the foot pedal to start recording or if you're doing overdubs, you can punch yourself in and then punch yourself out. So it's a handy tool to have and you can purchase it and it's very relatively inexpensive. So I think this covers most of the features of the uh, multi-track recorder. So um, let's move on to the next one. The next function is the digital audio interface. It's a device that converts analog audio sources into digital data that your computer can record and process. Very much like the standalone digital recorder, the audio interface can record to your computer 12 discrete tracks. But in addition to that, it can play back from your computer two separate stereo tracks. So instead of recording to your SD card, you record directly to your computer and you can record the 12 tracks simultaneously if your computer allows it, or you can record one by one or you can layer it. The interface connects to your computer via a USB cable. And if you have um, Windows PC, for example, Windows 11, it'll automatically recognize it and your DAW should also recognize it. You just have to select it and you'll be able to record directly to it using your USB cable connection to the computer. The outputs coming out of your computer can be routed to either track 9 slash 10 or 11 dash 12. And if you look above, there are two buttons, USB 1-2 and USB 3-4. You press either one of those buttons or both, and when you select those buttons, all the outputs from your computer, audio outputs, can be routed to your board, and which in turn can be routed to your speakers or your headphones. So you can use the board in your studio as a monitoring system. Uh, not, not just an interface recording in, but also a playback system in your, in your studio where you can have your studio monitors and your headphones uh, playback and uh, you can playback any source from the computer, be it uh, YouTube, be it a, a CD, um, any audio source plays perfectly and great sound coming out through your board. So it's a, it's a very, very useful part of the, of the system. Another feature worth mentioning is that while you're recording to your digital audio workstation on the computer, you can also at the same time record to your SD card. Why would you want to do that? Well, think about if you are recording the band at the venue and you took your board and you took your laptop or your computer and you're recording directly to your computer, but uh, halfway through the set, your computer crashes, locks up, who knows, the, you know, it goes down. If that happens, the SD card becomes a backup. So you're going to you keep recording, even though the computer is down, the board is still operating and it's still recording to the SD card. So it's a great feature that you can use in case of an emergency. The interface shares most of the features that the uh, recording board and the PA board have. 
like low latency monitoring, high quality preamps featuring low noise, low distortion, and up to 60 dB of gain. It shares the ability of having five separate monitor mixes for your musicians. In effect, it's really the same board just used to record directly to your computer. It's a great deal and it's something very, very useful. The same as a multi-track recorder, you cannot record the board's effect directly to the tracks on your computer. You can only use them for monitoring. So it, it works very similar. In fact, the interface works almost identical to the standalone digital multi-track recorder. Only instead of recording to the SD card, you're going directly into your computer. And once you're in the computer, you um, have the flexibility of doing real good uh, edits or uh, EQing, compression, all kinds of things that you can do on your DAW that you cannot do on the board. So it's a great, great feature to have. And I think we basically covered it because it's simple. It's just a connection to your computer that allows you to record your instruments, your analog audio source directly to the computer for further processing. So it's a simple device and um, I think we've covered most of it. So we're ready to move to the next function. And last but not least, this board makes a really great sounding live PA mixer. It has all the same great features that we've been discussing in the last two functions. It's a great sounding board. Very versatile. You can do small venues, you can do large venues. All you need to do is for the sound that's going out into the uh, venue, into the public, you connect two powered speakers onto the master outs. And uh, depending on what size venue you're going and what you have, you can connect big speakers like 15 inch woofers, uh, two way speakers that maybe have nowadays they come with a thousand watts per speaker. And you can really pump some sound into your audience, but you can also add some powered monitors. And in the powered monitors, you can connect it to the outputs and uh, labeled A, left and right, quarter inch plugs. And uh, you can actually send the same mix that you're sending out to your audience, out to the monitors, or you can select mix A, and then you can have yourself a different mix for your monitors that you have for the master. For example, if out to the venue you are miking, let's say, three, four microphones for vocals, but you also have keyboards plugged in maybe to the uh, 9 slash 10 or 11 dash 12, and maybe you have a bass and a, and a guitar, or you might uh, be miking the drums in some way, maybe just the bass drum and the snare. You can select that for your monitors, you can choose not to have any of the instruments come out and just have the vocals, or you can select which instruments you want coming out of the monitors. So in effect, you have a separate mix for your monitors, if you choose, then you can have for the outside. And just by a push of a button, you can switch between your mix A and your master mix. So you can pick what you want coming out of your monitor. It's very flexible and it's very good. It's got a great sound, good EQ section. So you can EQ each microphone or each instrument going out, you can EQ it. Uh, it will be affecting the monitors as well as the sound going out to the venue. You have a lot of flexibility in sounds and in the mixes you can do. And one great feature that I like for the PA board, which is also available for the other two functions, but I think in the PA board is really handy, is that if you go to uh, venues, you let's say you have the same venues every other week or once or twice a month you play at the same club, and you get to a club that's rather difficult to get a good sound. So you work on your sound on that first gig, and you uh, get your faders and the, and the levels for the, for the microphones and the instruments just right. You EQ it just right. You make sure you get, you're not getting any feedback and you're getting the right sound for the reverbs and everything. Once you have everything set, maybe after this first set, second set, maybe even at the end of the gig, you can actually save those settings to a scene. So then if you write that down and you said, okay, I saved the settings for this club to scene one, and then you go to another club uh, next week and you get different settings and you turn and change all the settings. If you go back to that original venue, 
All you have to do is recall that scene that you stored your settings to, and you have, you're going to return to the same mix, the same EQs, the same effects that you had where you tuned it and you got it sounding just right. So you save a lot of time when you do different gigs and get to save all the way to nine different scenes. So, you know, if you're busy moving around and uh, you're getting a good sound at a club or a venue and you know you're going to return to that venue, instead of starting from scratch, you have a saved scene which will actually bring in the level of the faders. It will bring in the level of the effects on each channel and also the EQ that you might have used. So it's a great time saver and it's uh, it works really well. So that's one of the features of the live board that, that I particularly like. And just like we said before, you've got different monitors. So if any of your uh, musicians have in-ear monitors or just regular monitors, you can plug into any of the five monitor outputs and give them their own mix or, or, or the master mix. So you have that flexibility. You have phantom power in case you use your condenser mics. You have variable compression on the first eight channels uh, for your microphones or lines, so you can actually be adding a little bit of compression to go out to your audience. So you get a great sound, and it's a, it's a great PA board, but wait, there's more. If you decide you want to record your your gig and you're, you're uh, having a good uh, venue and you, you really want to make a recording of your concert, you can do that. You have a, a multi-track recorder built in that you can set up all the tracks to record. You're going to be able to record your, your performance, which is, is an added bonus to this uh, live PA board. Overall, this unit is very versatile and for the, for the amount of money you pay for it, nowadays it's going somewhere around $600, $650. I think it's a great buy and a great sound and it's very flexible. So this concludes this episode, and I call them episode, but it's going to be a, this is part one of a part, uh, a six part series that I'm going to be doing that are on the short side, but um, I think I explained it with as much detail as I can and answer any of the questions that I've been asked uh, through the comments. So thank you for listening. Remember to subscribe. We, we love you guys. I've made a lot of friends that I'm very happy to have uh, met you guys out there that uh, play music and, you know, from all over the world. And um, I relate to you. So uh, we'll keep doing things. Uh, send me notes. Let me know what you would like to hear. And uh, we'll see you on the next one. Part two coming up. And part two, I'm going to get into detail of each channel, of the how to work the gain uh, knob the high Z and the pad, uh, the compression, and also the uh, record level metering. So stay tuned, look it up, it'll be coming out soon. All right, thank you. Mm -hmm.